friends, welcome to Movis Kitchen. Today in Movis Kitchen, we're making yogurt. I'll show you how you can make delicious Greek yogurt with very little preparation at home. So let's get to it. We have uh, some equipment here that you need to use or it's, it's pretty much everything is optional. What you really need is milk, two liters of milk in this case. You need uh, 60 grams of starter yogurt. In my case, I have uh, organic Greek yogurt that I will be using. It is thick, it is nice, and it's very luxurious. I also have scale to measure out my uh, starter yogurt and as well as my milk that I need to take. Uh, I have a candy thermometer here. It's very handy to make sure that uh, every step is properly measured in terms of temperature because temperature is very very critical when making yogurt if you want consistent results every time I would say this is probably a few bucks on uh, Amazon I will post the link for it it's very very handy this particular one you can actually hang in your pot and you can uh, just uh, measure your uh, temperature that way and you don't have to take it in and out so that's all you need you need your container so i have five mason jars each of them is like 500 sorry 460 grams worth of yogurt uh, goes into it so for two liters of milk i have five containers here you can have a big bowl or any other container that works best for you so as you can see i'm uh, bringing my milk up to temperature the trick really is to build the proteins properly so what you need to do is to uh, make sure that you uh, bring it up to temperature slowly. Do not try to rapid boil it. It will uh, make the proteins uh, more uh, rigid and it will not be a soft yogurt that you will get in the end. So all I'm doing is if you see the my silicone uh, spatula here, uh, it, it has a curved edge. So I'm just taking the curved edge alongside the pot and making sure that no, uh, no milk fats are uh, getting stuck to the bottom of the pan. I'll just do it slowly. As you can also see, I have um, my candy thermometer fixed inside and it is coming up to the temperature. Right now it's even below um, 100 uh, Fahrenheit. I want to take it up all the way to 180 and I will post all these readings uh, in, in the uh, description of this video. You need to take it all the way up to 180 degrees and then drop it to 110, 120 Fahrenheit. I usually take it all the way to 120 and uh, because I need to culture it on 115. By the time I start culturing, pour, uh, add my starter yogurt and pour that into the containers, it's at 115 Fahrenheit and that is where I keep it in my sous vide. So at this time, I will start getting that ready as well on the side. Uh, but uh, for the milk, as you can see, I'm on medium heat and I'm going to take a little bit of time to bring it up to temperature. I'm not going to rush it. So while we're scrolling over milk, I just want to give you a quick uh, overview of sous vide cooking. Sous vide literally in French means under vacuum. Mostly it is used to cook uh, um, uh, meats or vegetables or any other thing that you want to cook under vacuum. But in this case, we're going to use it for, for consistent temperature water bath. So when I submerge one of my uh, jars, with the cultured yogurt in it, it will stay at a certain temperature. You can achieve the same result anywhere else. So this uh, this machine is totally optional. If you want to buy it, I will leave the link in the description. It's on uh, uh, it goes on sale from time to time. Uh, you can buy this one, or you can buy any other machine that you you want. As you can see, I set my temperature to the target temperature to 115 degrees Fahrenheit. And I want to want it to continue for uh, anywhere between four to eight hours. In my case, I'll leave it for six hours. Now, this circulates water and keeps it on a certain temperature. Um, and I will be using that for keeping my uh, milk, cultured milk, or potential yogurt, uh, future yogurt, uh, and they're uh, in in these jars. I will uh, loose tight them, and then I will leave them in this uh, for uh, for a water bath. As you can see the red line of, uh, of the thermometer moving up, it is a little bit above 140. We are going all the way to 180 as I mentioned before. I think in previous clip I mentioned this 180, this is Celsius on this side so that was a mistake. You need to follow the Fahrenheit and we need to take it to 180 Fahrenheit or roughly 80 degrees centigrade. You don't want to boil it because it will change the structure of the proteins in the milk. 
So as I said earlier, we need to we don't need to boil it for yogurt. We just need to bring it to a certain temperature, which is 180 degrees Fahrenheit. And I'm just making sure that no fats are stuck to the bottom of the pan. Again, using the round edge of the uh, of the spatula, I will make sure that nothing is stuck to the bottom or the sides of the of the uh, of the pot here. So as you can see, it is perfectly 180 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. We don't want to go any higher. So fire out and this moves to off the, immediately off the stove so it stops uh, cooking. You don't want to cook it, you don't, uh, the reason we bring it to 180 degrees is to uh, form the uh, right proteins and then we bring it down to 120, 115 at which point the bacteria grow, uh, it's a perfect temperature for the yogurt bacteria to grow. So now the next step is to just bring it down to 120 degrees. The, formation of the right proteins that actually make uh, delicious and uh, luxurious yogurt is done. That was step number one. Now the step number two is to bring it down to 120 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. So for milk is as you can see 120 degrees now. I will start uh, doing my uh, process of adding the starter yogurt. I will take uh, my candy spoon, uh, candy temperature out. I don't need this anymore. Um, next step is to make sure there is no uh, fat, milk fat or anything stuck at the, the bottom. So I'll just give it one last stir, make sure that I take off everything from the bottom. There is not much because I have been stirring it all along. So it is all very nice and uh, homogeneous at this point. So what I'm going to do is... I will add my starter yogurt which we measured to be 60 grams, 60 milliliters. Milliliters and grams are usually used interchangeably but my scale has both in it. So I say, sometimes I say gram but I really mean milliliters. So, and I just mix it all and stir. Now this mixture is ready to go into our containers. Quickly, I'll start pouring my mixture into my yogurt containers. Again, if you have just one container, you can pour all the contents out into one. Make sure that you don't fill it all the way to the top. Just leave a little bit of room at the top. That's 450 grams roughly. And I will take one of the lids. And don't over tighten it. You just what is called finger tight and leave it there. And I'll place it inside my sous vide here just to maintain the temperature. It is already 115 degrees. I will actually start um, that right after I put all the yogurt in. As you can see, all my jars are in uh, in water bath. Uh, again, this is optional. Uh, you don't have to use uh, sous vide, but you can do is you can wrap them in uh, something warm and put them in the oven. Or uh, there are. Uh, yogurt therms or yogurt incubators that are available that you can use as well. So any which way, the idea is to maintain the temperature for uh, 6 to 8 hours or 4 to 8 hours. Now we will just start uh, um, start our sous vide. It will bring it back to 115. Right now it has just dropped because we were just taking a little time. It has, as you can see, it has dropped to 112.8. We will bring it back to 115 and start. Okay, so our sous vide has reached its uh, 115 degrees temperature, which it will maintain for six hours. Uh, what I will do is I will cover this up so nothing splashes out, nothing goes in. As you can see, they are beer almost all the way submerged into um, uh, the water bath. Uh, no water will go in. Uh, I have uh, finger tightened all the lids. So if you are using sous vide, just keep that in mind. Now my sous vide box, as you can see here. Um, Right here, I actually had to put a little uh, upside down uh, plate in there to keep it uh, keep it up. Uh, if you have uh, uh, this size box, you may want to do it. If you have longer jar, you don't need to do it. Or if you have a smaller box, you will have to. Now on this sous vide, there are marks for minimum and maximum um, water level. So you can't go below that water level. So you have to bring your jars up uh, to some degree. 
Okay, friends. So here we are. Uh, it stayed in sous vide for almost six, seven hours, and then I took them out and put them in the refrigerator uh, for them to chill. So now it's moment of truth. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, open one and see how it looks. So it looks beautiful. You can see the texture. So the real test is we'll take take it out. Look at that beautiful yogurt. This is awesome. Best yogurt ever. Consistently every time that you can see. So I can scoop out spoon after spoon and you will see how how beautiful, how luxurious, how creamy that yogurt is. And you can't see much waste separation. That's again sign of a, a very good yogurt. Friends, thank you very much for joining us today. I encourage you to like, subscribe and comment. And let us know how we can make it simpler and better. Thank you.